Hey, what's up y'all? Bass Addict here with another video. Um, this weekend I wasn't able to get out on the water, unfortunately. So I thought it would be a good time to kind of give a rundown of my kayak setup. Um, for anybody who's wondering, anybody who's in the market for a kayak, um, just to, to let you guys know how I have my rig set up and um, maybe that'll help you guys out. Um, if you're purchasing one or if you're just looking to rig yours out a little more, I've had mine for about three, a little over three years maybe. Um, I bought it in the summer of 2020 during the pandemic, uh, the beginning of the pandemic. And yeah, I've just slowly been adding stuff onto it um, as I go. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with my rig. It's got basically everything I need besides maybe live scope, but it's kind of out of my budget at the moment. So, um, yeah, and then maybe a battery upgrade. But for the most part, it's got everything I need. It fishes really great, um, and I feel super comfortable with it on the water. So, with that being said, let's just jump straight into it. This is my rig. It's an Old Town Topwater 120 PDL. I guess it would be the 2019-2020 model. Um, I think there's a few differences with the current model, but um, yeah, super comparative. Um, so it's the, the PDL, so it comes with the pedal drive, which I currently don't have in right now, but that was what I was fishing with for up until the beginning of this year. It's the propeller system, similar to native kayaks or some of those other ones since Hobie has the patent on the on the um, kick fin system so the pedal drive is great you've got this little storage compartment and it's super easy it's just like riding a bike um, but now I've upgraded to the motor which is a life changer but we'll get into that a little bit later some of the features on the old town Obviously, you've got the the port where the drive goes in. I have this little piece that I bought um, to keep the water out now that I have the motor. You've got front hatch. got center hatch. got the drop-down rudder system in the back, which is controlled by this lever. And then on the other side... You've got the steering, which I upgraded. It, it's usually a ball, but I upgraded this. It's a little taller and easier to, to grab onto. For me, my hands are a little big. Um, what else? It comes standard with the three flush mount, flush rod mounts. And then you've got these grooves in the front on both sides. For two rods, got the little handle, bungee to strap down your rudder, um, the paddle paddle holder is super nice. It keeps it out of the way. You don't have to store it under your seat, next to your seat, anything like that. It's got these these two track mounts on both sides, so you can accessorize with fish finders or. Um, I've got my net holder, stuff like that, and then there's another handle on the front and your seat. Um, so basically, that's everything that comes stock on the kayak as is when you buy it. I think when I bought it, mine came with a paddle as a part of the package. Um, but for the most part, that's everything that you're going to get. And then... We get into all the add-ons. It's been, yeah, I've done everything myself, which was a process. I'm not like the handiest person in the world. I'm not an electrician or anything like that. So running some of the wires was interesting, but we figured it out. So first, get into the fish finder. I've got the Hummingbird Helix 7. <laughs> It's the Mega SI, so it's got side imaging, it's got down imaging, and obviously regular sonar and uh, mapping. And then I've got the Navionics um, 
chip so I get the on the main lakes not on these local lakes but on the main uh, larger bodies of water I get that um, contour mapping which is super nice um, yeah I ran this is the Hobie through hole wiring kit so I ran the wires the transducer comes out it's underneath the kayak wiring comes through this hole there's another through hole kit right there um, it pops through into the, the hatch there wirings coiled up here connected to this um, Nakwa battery can't remember what size it is but I'll link it in the description um, but it's a super nice lithium ion battery super compact it doesn't take up a bunch of space in my hatch and then I've just got it velcroed so I can stick it in there it's not gonna move around and then yeah so I've got that wiring kind of zip tied up the excess and then it pops out here and plugs in to the back of my unit super easy um, and this comes off also so when I get off the water I just pull this off throw it in the car don't got to worry about it shaking around or coming off um, so that was kind of one of the first mods that I did Having a fish finder definitely um, a game changer. Helps you um, kind of pick out spots as you're as you're running on the water, and then also like graphing around looking for bait and um, schools of fish. Also, the next mod that I did was the landing gear. This is the Boondocks landing gear. Um, it was a little difficult, uh, there's not really like a super clear space on the old town to put the landing gear and also this, this system can torque, put a lot of torque on the plastic of your, the hole of your kayak and so I use this, um, this kind of cutting board material, um, to as a backing so I have that on the inside and underneath here to kind of keep the hole from bending and then it's bolted down there so I've got my wheels it makes it so much easier transporting my kayak pulling it up and down ramps and stuff as opposed to having to put it up on a cart every time strap it down unstrap it pull it off you guys know um, and on the boondocks gear it's also got a gear track so if you wanted to add more accessories behind the seat for a while I had my um, camera mount which is now back here I had it up here but it was a little too close to my seat and I think it was probably my second video that I posted um, that was the camera angle and it just it was kind of like blocked by my head which wasn't the best angle so I moved away from that but you can add other accessories back here it's a nice little addition um, also got the Yak Attack black pack my crate moved up from the I used to have a milk crate that I kind of modded out with the lid um, but eventually ended up getting the black pack Got a lot of room, so I store all my tackle, um, all my baits, scents, extra hooks, stuff like that. Got all my stickers. Um, and it has five rod holders, um, so I'm able to put the majority of my rods back here. It has pre-drilled holes, so you can... And, it, and you can just add on the rod holders. I think there's even a couple more up here, but it wouldn't fit on my kayak. On certain other kayaks, just how they're built, you can fit a couple more rod holders. Um, but I've already got the two um, right there. 
So in total I can fit, I think, so there's five on the crate, two there, and then I usually keep two in the front, like right, right here next to my, next to my feet. I'll just run it, kind of set the, the butt of the rod here and run them straight forward. I'm sure you guys have seen in my videos, but I'll keep those, like whatever I'm throwing at the time that I want um, easier access to, I'll keep those in the front. And then everything else I'll keep towards the back um, if I'm not using it at the time. And I mean, nine rods, you're probably good. Sometimes I'll sneak in another one to make it 10 if I really don't know what I'm <laughs> gonna catch the fish on. But you should be set with nine rods. I mean, there's not too many instances where you really need more than that. So having that crate is definitely a huge, a huge asset. And then I added this metal gear track. I think this is a Yak Attack gear track as well. Once again, already the black pack already has the pre-drilled holes. So I just had to run the, the bolt and the nut to hold that down. And then that's where I've got my, my Yolo Tech power stick, which is my camera mount that runs behind my seat. And so that's connected to another Nakua, that same battery that I showed you guys that I run my fish finder on. Um, I run my camera on, so I don't have to keep changing batteries all day. It just runs the whole time I'm out fishing and it lasts like, I don't even think it takes out a bar running the camera all day and the fish finder as well like i've never had it die on me during the day those knockers are super they've got a lot of uh, power and hold battery for a long time so that's just makes my life a lot easier not having to worry about batteries not having to worry about my equipment dying on me in the middle of the day so that's a huge help and i've got the stick in my hand so i can't really show you guys but basically the pole it goes into this plugs in and and then you plug the cable into your camera and you got power for the whole day so that's um, just super simple doesn't take any time at all makes my life so much easier and let's see from there we've got the newest addition to the family um, the motor, trolling motor, um, I actually, I bought it used off a, a local guy who fishes Yakabass. Um, he gave me the battery and the motor for a good deal. So, um, kind of, I've been looking at the motor for a while, but it was a little expensive for my budget. And as soon as I saw that pop up, I had to jump on it. So that's been super fun this year playing around with it it's the motor guide xi3 with the gps so it's got spot lock on it it's remote powered so you've got your different speeds you got the anchor button for the spot lock um and then you got like the north up um, configuration so you can if you want to keep your kayak facing in one direction and then it comes with two different propellers i usually keep the two fin the katana blade um because it it cuts grass better and usually i'm fishing around grass but you've also got the tri blade for like more open water if you're fishing big water and not really getting too shallow this is probably a, a better bet and it might get you a little more speed but i'm good with the katana blade it does well it cuts grass pretty good and yeah so to get into a little bit of how i rigged it um it already came the guy before me had it rigged with these anderson connectors um and it was a nice clean job already came with the sleeve and everything so i thought I'm not really gonna want to mess with it i might as well keep the anderson connector and just base my rigging system on that so I've got flush mount, um, 
female connector. Um, got it all siliconed up on the inside and the outside, so no water gets in. I have no problem with water getting in my kayak um, at all. Like literally, I've never had any moisture inside unless I like left my hatch open, which doesn't happen. So um, yeah, and then I've got I think it's 10 gauge, not not too sure, but marine grade wire connected to the back of this it runs all the way back 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 to a second flush mount connector same exact one um, and then to my battery so the motor's pretty heavy and so I've got that all the way in the front I wanted to kind of counterbalance that weight keep that motor I mean that battery all the way to the rear of the kayak and this is also kind of the only spot that it would fit it doesn't fit behind my seat unfortunately because of the landing gear and so it just barely fits back here and so I'll show you got this battery box it already came rigged Thankfully, because I'm not, like I said, not the handiest person, so fuses and stuff like that is kind of a little complicated for me, but got the Bioino, it's an 80 amp hour lithium, lithium ion battery, um, a lot better than those, those gel batteries, because it cuts down the weight a lot, and in the kayak, you're going to be dragging it around. Um, having as little weight as possible is a huge help so if you guys can afford it I would definitely say go with the lithium the lithiums for your rigs um, they also last a lot longer um, but yeah the main thing is just that weight but I want to upgrade to a 100 amp hour soon for the most part the 80 does the job like I don't I don't run out of battery very often but it has happened like um, the first time I took it out on the Delta um, the tide was really ripping earlier in the year with all that rain and um, just running full speed in that current kind of drained my battery so situations like that and then I also ran out of battery one time on Clear Lake because I made a long run and then right before I got back to the ramp I ran out of battery and I had to paddle the rest of the way. Um, but there's times when, if I know I'm gonna be making some long runs, I'll put the pedal drive in and the motor. So um, if my motor dies, I can just pedal. Not have to worry about paddling. But eventually I'll upgrade to the, to the 100 amp hour. It's just like 800 bucks, 700 bucks that I don't wanna spend right now. Um, but for the time being the 80 amp does the job and just super simple I plug in plug in here in the back and then plug in here in the front and I'm good to go the motor also comes off it's on this this is the mounting system and then this is the motor guide plate here and it has this pin you just pull out motor pops off throw it in the car and then when I get to where I'm going just throw it back on there put the pin in and it's it's solid it's not gonna go anywhere but it makes it super easy um, super easy to move around transport and all that and then couple other things um, I've got this track mounted kind of roller thing that I use for my motor it could also be used for like a rod or a paddle but I use it for my net and just keep it keep it on my left side I like to land fish on my left side I set the hook to my left so kind of over time I figured that out so I keep my graph on my right out of the way 
and then I've got my net right here super easy to just fight the fish grab the net scoop them and super clean not because netting fish in a kayak as I'm sure you guys know can be kind of a mess so having the net easily accessible not having to reach back and grab it makes my life so much easier because I used to keep it like here in one of these rod holders um, and it was just always in the way and it's always awkward as you're like fighting the fish in front of you you're pulling the fish is pulling on your line and then you're trying to reach backwards grab the net it's just recipe for disaster especially when you're fighting big fish so um, I kind of just over time figured out what works best for me and that's my setup I mean it's yeah it does the job for me um, it's registered obviously got my CF number but if y'all have any questions drop them in the comments if you need any tips or insight on rigging I would love to help probably don't know everything because this is my first kayak I've had I didn't even have a paddle kayak before this I kind of just jumped straight into it um, got a little too inspired by Greg Blanchard's videos but it's been a blast I love my kayak it's caught me a lot of big fish and um, maybe an upgrade down the line but for now I'm super happy and yeah so um, like I said drop any questions in the in the comment section um, but I appreciate y'all watching and we'll definitely be back out on the water next week um, just kind of wanted to change it up a little bit since I couldn't get on the water show you guys my rig and she's a doozy so we'll check back in on the next one peace